Within 10 minutes, um, she was like, I don't think you have what you think you have. Uh, just based on our initial 10 minutes of meeting. Patrick walked into a doctor's office and was walking on his own. Um, he eventually walked with a cane. He eventually walked with crutches. And he is now in a wheelchair probably 80% of the time. As of now, there is no cure for F.A. Dr. Goyle sat us down and told us that her diagnosis was true, that the blood work did show that he has a disease that is a gene disorder, and it's called Friedrich's ataxia. Uh, my name is Patrick Cogan. I was diagnosed with FA when I was 25. I was looking back symptomatic back as young as five. Uh, when Patrick was about five years old, he was actually diagnosed by a child neurologist saying that he had a mild CP, mild cerebral palsy. Um, when he started to go through middle school, we noticed he started falling a little more and we went to, we were referred to a um, orthopedic doctor for possibly lengthening his heel cords. I was diagnosed with something called CMT, Shaco Murray tooth disease uh, in eighth grade. So he went through one surgery in middle school and it really didn't work. So his senior year of high school, he went through a whole nother surgery. Unfortunately, that didn't work either. And through the next few years, he continued to struggle walking more and more. I was falling almost every day, uh, multiple times a day. Finally, I just cracked, listened to my mom, started Googling neurologists. Patrick was taking a Kaplan course to go to law school and the instructor told Patrick that if he could get a letter from a physician saying that he needed a little extra time to write that they could extend his time frame. And that's where we ended up at Mass General. He was referred to Dr. Goyle at Mass General. Within 10 minutes, um, she was like, I don't think you have what you think you have, uh, just based on our initial 10 minutes of meeting, she was able to kind of pre-diagnose me that CMT wasn't the correct diagnosis, mainly based on that CMT doesn't affect your balance. <laughs> so the fact that brought me there was my lack of coordination is not a symptom of what my previous diagnosis was. So from there, we began testing um, for FA. They tested me for a lot, but she kind of fell right off the bat that it was Friedrich's. She called Patrick and said, I really would like to see you and talk about just what we're looking at here. Um, Patrick said to her, you know, I really want you to tell me what it is. And she said, I will, but you can't Google it. She said, I want you to go to one site where? So, of course, I helped on Google. I, I knew you were going to tell yeah. me that you did, Patrick. I knew. I could feel Children, you. Children, don't hit that big red button in front of you. Right. So, she gave me a website to go to. I went to the website, and it was pretty scary. I remember it exactly the date it happened. It was December 23rd of 2010. And I can remember Patrick and I asking her if this was a type of disease that uh, would actually end Patrick's life. And she told us that we could not think of it that way, that, you know, you have to live each day uh, to your fullest, as hard as that is to say to somebody, and you can't really focus on the things you're not going to be able to do or can't do right now. We have to focus on trying to make things better for you and more comfortable. 80%, um, give or take, of people with FA, um, 
have and succumb to a heart-related disease. So it is considered a life-shortening disorder, not because of the FA itself, but because it opens you up to things like heart disease and lung disease, and where 80% of people do end up with a heart disorder. Um, some of the literature says the average of lifespan is 55 to 65. Right now, my heart is fine. The disease will progress. There isn't a cure for the disease. There isn't any type of remission for this type of disease. I, I still have to wrap my head around it myself as to um, how it even happened. It, it's a, a case where my husband and I both were carriers of this ataxia gene. And one in four children of parents that are both carriers will have a disease. And we, we fit into those. Unfortunately, we, fit, we just fit into that, so um, it's a really sad thing to see. Definitely not common. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of, about it until I was diagnosed. Um, it affects between the literature I've read, some says one in every 50,000, some says one in every 100,000. So well, I split the middle and tell people one in every 75. Um, it's similar to ALS, mm -hmm. it has its differences. It's neuromuscular, um, so it basically it affects most of the muscles. The easiest way I describe it is your brain tells you you're gonna go in a straight line and you end up to the left in the wall. Uh -huh. Or your brain tells you you're gonna pick up this glass and you spill half of it before it gets to your mouth. So it definitely affects your cerebellum in telling your nerves and your muscles what to do. There is no cure and there is no treatment. There isn't even a remission for this type of disease. And actually, you know, every I actually had to look it up several times to figure out just what it was that Patrick had, and I got totally lost when they started talking about genes and chromosomes and X's and Y's, and it, it got to the point where it was like, you know what, he has this disease and we just have to move forward from there. And the best way I ever describe this disease to people is, is I say it's, it's an evil cousin to ALS, because that's how someone described it to me. And when you put it into that perspective or that context, so to speak, you, you do a double take. You just say, you know, Patrick can have that. Um, we all know what ALS is. We all have seen the pictures in the real life of ALS. And now we're living and seeing the real life of Friedrich's ataxia. Um, I don't look at it as a negative. I look at it as a, um, as a positive because I, I use it to motivate me. Um, to go do 100 miles, to train for a triathlon. You know what I mean? And in June, there was, like I said, six or seven of us that went out and we helped Patrick ride the 100 miles that he wanted to ride. And it was one of the most surreal moments of my life, and I think all of our lives. So, Kogan's Heroes actually started a couple years ago when my father passed away from cancer. We, um, the year he was diagnosed, we were with him to Philly and took part in Lance Armstrong's Livestrong Challenge. Mm -hmm. Since then, Cogan Sears has kind of expanded. Mm -hmm. um, over the summer, we did a century ride, a 100 mile bike ride, to raise money for FARA, mm -hmm. which is the Friedrichs Ataxia Research Alliance. Um, and we raised close to four grand. Wow. And to me, it's huge. I mean, all that money goes to FARA and all that goes to research. Awesome. So I have no doubt that we will, you know, we're gonna cure it, it's just a matter of time. I had applied, they do a grant every year mm -hmm. um, to help get people adaptive athletic equipment. So I applied for the grant and they ended up 
purchasing me a brand new cat trike. Um, and it's, it was like a $3,500 machine. So it was, I mean, it's 30 pounds lighter, I fly. Yeah, it came in handy when you're, when you're in three wheels trying to go up 100 miles, you know? Being a mother, or a parent, I should say, for me, I feel very helpless that I can't help Patrick, that I can't cure him, I can't give him a pill or a, a drink and say, take this every day and things are going to get better because the reality is they're not going to get better. And I'm not saying that to be negative, but I'm saying that because we, I really need to take a look at this disease and, and see just what can I do. And as I pondered over that for the last two years and mostly the last few months as Patrick has progressed into that wheelchair and, I, and seeing him struggle through, you know, trying to find the way of to get better housing for himself, to find a way to help himself financially, to pay medical bills. And when I started to work on the fundraiser, it became even more clear to me that there was a bigger picture than all of this, that Patrick and I for two years have been trying to find help for Patrick, and we haven't been able to do that. We've looked for foundations and grants that would help us get him a wheelchair van or help us buy lumber to build a, a ramp and we have not been able to find that and it finally became clear to me that I think this is what my job is to be that this isn't about Patrick anymore it's a bigger picture it's about thousands of other people that have been affected with Friedrich's ataxia that are sitting right now at home and need a wheelchair van and need a ramp and have medical bills out the kazoo that need to get taken care of and that's why I have put my foot forward and I have created the Project Wheels Foundation. I'm calling on you for you to think about the bigger picture in all of this and to help the Project Wheels Foundation, not just help Patrick, but thousands of other people that are in this country. So I'm asking you and I'm challenging you to go out there and create a fundraiser for us. Create a walk around the Wakefield Lake. Create a beer day um, at a bar room that you may frequent or a restaurant you may frequent. Because my goal is by 2013 to 2015 to have $5 million in our foundation. And when we reach that goal, the people, the Patrick Cogans of the world, are gonna be able to get around, they're gonna have a service dog, and they're gonna be able to go to work, and they're gonna be able to know that they're be, being taken care of. Finding a cure is inevitable. Um, from an appointment I had with Dr. Lynch, they know how to cure the disease. It's just finding the technology and a way to do it. The knowledge is there, it's just not all of it. I, it's inevitable, it's going to happen. We always have to hope that there's gonna be a cure for Friedrich's ataxia. You know, when I look at not just Patrick, but Kyle, who I was introduced to from Patrick, who's an inspiration to me, and, and I know Patrick. And when I look at him and Pat, they're the, the hope that we do have a cure one day. That the two of them may not be able to walk the way they used to walk, but won't progress to a worse stage than they are now. Kyle's work with Farah is just, it, it's mind boggling what this young man has been able to do. I, I love listening to him speak. He inspires everyone he speaks to. He actually came all the way from Philly and rode the century with us and he spoke in a backyard and had about 20 people crying through his passion. Success in our fight against FA largely depends on two factors. Number one, each individual person's decision to take action and refuse to let FA call the shots. And number two, 
our interaction with each other and our support of each other in this fight and working together to find a cure. And those are two things I see in Patrick Kogan. His ability to, to look inside himself and take action for himself to better his own life and also to lift up those around him and be a part of the overall FA community and work together to find a cure. And that's what I love about Patrick Kogan and that's why I know we'll find a cure because people like him and all the other people in the FA community, we have an amazing community and together we will cure FA. So for all the Kyles, the Patricks, the Jeans, the Aarons that I've met, we will. We will find a cure one day for free ataxia.